The workplace is full of secrets. Secrets people have the audacity to print. Even if you're careful with printing, unfortunate incidents can happen. Exposing your confidential documents to the wrong people. My only question is why just a thousand? Uh, what an honor and privilege to be here, Chris. Thank you and the rest of my panelists. Uh, great to be with you. And, and uh, Hannah, what you do is noble and important. And uh, we wouldn't be the country where you are without immigrants and without small business owners. So thank you. motivated in the morning and when I walked in you expect to find uh, friends that uh, you know give you some encouragement I found a few of those and then I ran into the great philosopher Ed McGill who simply stated to me hey I paid good money to be here don't suck so, <laughs> we all get motivated in different ways Ed so thank you for those encouraging words when I uh, interviewed with the uh, company some 35 years ago there's a gentleman by the name of Chad Sims in Dallas Texas who was interviewing him had a good day, you feel like you reached that point to where you're no longer being interviewed, you're being recruited. And we're on our way out to the airport, and he knew that I had two other job offers. One was with the Georgia Pacific, the other one was good year tiring rubber. And Chad, and before we became the principal financial group, we were the banker's wife. Some people in the room may not know that. And so it was the banker's wife at the time. And we're driving out to the airport, and Chad said, hey, I'm going to ask you a question, Dan. He said, do you want to be in the plywood business the rest of your life? I don't know Mr. Sims. And by the way, if you grow up in Texas, it's Mr. I don't know Mr. Sims. I don't, I don't know. That may not be such a great idea. He said, let me ask you another question. Do you really think you want to be in the, uh, the tire business? You want to be in the tire business? Gee, I don't know Mr. Sims. That doesn't sound like, a, that sound like such a great idea. He said, come to the Banker's Life Company and you will change lives every day. And the reason I share that story is you have to find your passion. I recently got chastised. We have an employee opinion survey, and I read every single page of what you want your CEO to know. It's single-spaced. It's 877 pages long. I read every statement. And you really pick up some great nuggets, one of which is the free drink money that we did away with three years ago. They, they're still offended by it. <laughs> But one of the comments I thought was interesting because I made a comment about if you're in a job that you don't love, choose a different company or choose a different job. And in my public comment, I said, I met a person, a good friend of mine, and he was in a lousy job, hated his job. And I said to him, why do you stay in the job for the money? And I said, I can't think of a worse reason to stay in any, in any job for the money. I think it's incredibly shallow. And I got a lot of negative feedback from that, but I'm not going to pull back from the statement because I do think you have to wake up every day passionate about the industry that you're in. If you're not passionate about food or treating cancer patients or helping small businesses grow or providing the best banking services there is or providing the best education, I don't know how you get yourself jacked up to go do your job every day. So find your passion. Find what makes you work. I also get asked with some frequency, what keeps you up at night? And actually, it's an eight pound teacup Yorkie that thinks he has to sleep at night next to me. Other than that, I sleep like a baby. Wake up every three hours and cry. <laughs> but the real point of that is, if you do your job every single day in an honest and honesty, ethical, and passionate way, I think we all sleep pretty well. But I think one of the things you have to do is when you're problem solving, focus on the problem. I can't tell you how many times I get into meetings and it, the, the conversations start going so sideways in so many different directions. Back up the truck and ask yourself the real question, what is it that we're trying to solve today? What's the real issue? And again, I think we have to stay focused on that issue. If you haven't seen the Netflix documentary on Bill Gates, called Decoding Bill Gates. Do it. There are great insights. This guy reads constantly. He reads 180 pages an hour, right? And he has 90% retention. And yet he's still the guy that quotes and says, frankly, you have to work hard, you have to be, you have to be smart, and you have to have perseverance. 
And that's what works for Bill Gates, and certainly work for myself, and I suspect everyone in this room. The last thing I would say is, no one in this room got to where you're at without your spouse or your partner. The role that they play, getting you motivated, the role they play, in my case, Joni, taking the highs down and taking the, and the lows up. Um, when you go home tonight, be sure to thank your spouse or your partner for all the great things they do to make you the great business leaders you are. It's a privilege. Press on.